And so let's just do a quick round of introductions. Say hello if you'd like and say who you are and why you're here. We'll start with you, Kira. Hi, everyone. Well, let's not do that. That's gonna, you can just talk. You don't have to open your mic. We've got a yeah. mic here. I forgot about that. Kira's in the room. Can you hear me? Good enough. Yes. Perfectly. Hi, everyone. I'm Kira. I'm a communication and information design major, and I'm here because I think hypertext is fun, and uh, I'd like to make things in hypertext. James is here. He talked about databases. Yep. Say hello, Julia, so we know that you can speak and that your mic works. Hello. Hello. Thanks. So, last time, Jeremy and I talked and talked and talked. So this time, you guys have to say, wait a second, I don't get what that means, and interrupt. That's why we have you. <laughs> That's why we're here. It's a conversation. But So what I wanted to talk about was the meaning of four words. And... Um, I'm going to share my screen so we've got something going, and I'm going to try to take some notes a little bit as we go and see how that works. It's a challenge. Um, so the four words that I was using um, are there, and my screen, you should be seeing my screen now, yes. And the tricky, and James, you want to kind of make your record look as much like my screen as you can. You might even do better by recording out of Zoom, but those four words are text, Hyperwiki and tiddly. Okay, so that's my sort of take on this whole hypertextual thing, taking a big step back. And so let's just chat about these in some level of order. And so, um, so I started with the notion of text. And if you see, look at that, that, look how slow that is. And so for to me, text is like the body, the corpus, the whole thing. And the green eggs and ham exercise that some of you created, the text was those 50 words and all the tiddlers you built. Nothing outside of that text. So, Jeremy, you want to talk, chat a little bit about how text relates to your thinking and tiddlywiki and your single file concept and all that stuff? Yes. So, first, I think it's interesting to compare this with what we were doing last time, where we were doing an ex, I think it's an exclusive, non, uh, sorry, a complete non overlapping um, categorization. Um, here, in thinking of these four words, um, I th what I find most appealing is that each of the words has multiple simultaneous meet meanings that seem relevant to what we're doing. And text is a great case in point. That there's a number of um, aspects of the word text that I think are very relevant to our discussion. Um, you've mentioned a couple. If I can un figure out how to un full screen my machine, I can just get back to my notes. Um, I was interested in the way that in TiddlyWiki, everything is text. So this is a slightly different sense where um, everything is a sequence of characters. So the computer definition of text, if you like, which is a one-dimensional stream of characters that in, can include control characters like line breaks. So a great virtue of TiddlyWiki is that it's heavily text-based. So the bits and pieces that you work on within TiddlyWiki, you can readily manipulate with everything you know about manipulating text. You can copy and paste them. So I would compare TiddlyWiki and wikis like it to those kinds of GUI environments, which emphasize dragging things with the mouse and you know, pressing buttons to do things like duplicate them, which lacks that ability to copy and paste. So it's a, it's a different a text space user interface. We see the same thing in many domains is a radically different undertaking than a GUI based one. And although TiddlyWiki itself, we use it in a GUI, there's something about the heart of the engine that makes it tick. That is all text. It's text all the way down. You know, we talk about Tiddlers being the smallest unit of content within TiddlyWiki. Um, but it, it, without question, the atoms from which tiddlers are made are the characters of text. Okay, that's a totally different sense of text than I had. So thanks. That's, that's... And I think it joins yours. I mean, I agree with all the ones that you mentioned. And I think it's particularly attractive, for instance, that we've got my techno definition of text. Yeah. Um, but the corpus definition of text and the way people talk about the text in an academic context is a sort of gloriously, not exactly, a, it's, not a, it's not opposing nor intention. It's, a, it's an observation that exists in a different universe almost. Um, right. So I quite like this sort of stack of different concerns, different areas of concern that are all touched by this very powerful word text. 
Yeah, very cool. Okay, I like the notion of a techno definition. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then I think in the discussion group, folks were talking a little bit about archives and rec and dead links and being, you know, taking you to places that the link doesn't work anymore. That's because when I created my text, I did a bad job in a sense that I didn't take the care to make sure that my text was defined. So you sometimes in, in hypertext, certainly in the web, you create these texts that have outer edges, if you will, links to the outside that you don't own or control. And you decide that those are in a sense outside of your text. So you don't have to have responsibility for making sure that your readers can get to them. My yeah. text is at the link, not at the other end of the link. Yeah. Um, and um, someone was saying, oh, you should have permalinks. And they're right at some level, but on the other level, it's like, you know, you can't. I, I spent years think, trying to figure out how to archive the entire web. And, and it just, yeah, there, there was a night. So anyway, so that's where I started with the notion of text. So that's, that's, that's very cool. Um, and what I do want to talk, could you talk about what a single file interface, because oh, it yeah. chided me for having images that broke the outside hmm. of the wiki, and you said that breaks the spirit of the wiki because it's supposed to be a single file, in other words, a text. I think, funnily enough, here we're starting to talk about considerations that probably go under the tiddly head heading. The okay. important characteristics of tiddly wikis implementation and they they include a number of things about for instance tiddlywiki is um has very low barriers to participation and it's very egalitarian so these are things that are important about tiddlywiki the software but i don't think do fit into the twht um sorry they don't fit into the twh part they just fit into that final tiddly part okay um, if that makes sense so i mean i can talk about what's important to me about the single text file but it tends to be that that tends to end up being about the implementation and the impact that has on the people who are trying to use it and particularly conserve and archive content that kind of thing okay so let's come to that then in a minute um then we jump to the word hyper which i think is kind of an important word right hypertext kind of know what hyper is um and by you know this is a ted nelson word um from the 65. My year of birth, by the way. <laughs> okay, so it's an old word. I was five um, when Ted was thinking about hypertext. And there's a, um, there's a footnote that I found in one of his articles. I think it's linked here. Yes, there is. Okay. Um, where the sense of hyper means hyperspace, which are multiple, I think. Not, it's non-sequential, but not, um, not mm -hmm. like... Um, the other sense of hyper where people talk about it as, um, you know, powerful or, 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 mm. or something. It's really, I think for him about multi-sequential. Um, I, I think, I don't know what else, what, what thoughts have you had about that word hyper and, and what, how we use it to think about what we do? It's really interesting. Um, so I, I love the word hyper and I think it's historical resonance is bang on. We touched on, I think last week, how, um, hypertext is, is, has been long being a concern of the community and it dates back to the hippie era and I really like that it's a hippie word from that era that's an integral part of how we describe what we're doing and so I'd kind of applaud all of Ted Nelson's um, definitions but I love the comparison with hyperspace and there's something about plurality in that um, it's, it was almost in your words about how in a hyperspace there's multiple possible things spaces and you could be in any of them and they're all equally valid um, and they don't have a center and they don't have a space that's in charge so i think to me all of that comes from this idea of a hyperspace which is a collection of spaces if you see what i mean i often talk about how in tiddlywiki one of the sort of um what's the word, advanced things that we do is to take a text, break it up into tiddlers, and then make those tiddlers, thread them together in multiple different stories. And ideally, how it's the reader who even does that threading together into stories, and people might share the, these um, threads together. So all of, all of that has the same sense of the entities existing in multiple spaces simultaneously. 
Um, and, you know, the only way you would know you were in a hyperspace situation is if you were in multiple ones of those hyperspaces. If you're only in one of them, you're not aware of being in a hyperspace, if you see what I mean. Uh, yeah, that's very, okay, yeah. And so that confusion, that sense of anxiety that sometimes comes from being in hyperspace or in a hypertext may be caused in some way by that, the tension of being in multiple dimensions at the same time, which is, yes. I mean, maybe it is our normal state of affairs. I kind of think it is, but, but, but it creates tension in our lives. And it creates... It, it, it echoes, again, something about how our primal... Um, you know, animal brains um, work, we can actually have multiple conflicting ideas in our head at once and believe them both to be true. You know, and if we were truly the rational beings that we might sometimes daydream that we are, we wouldn't be able to do that. Um, and so I think, in a, you know, people might say something that in a sort of hippie tie-dye t-shirt, we are all in hyperspace, but we really are. Our our um, our mental existence, our cognition exists in multiple separate spaces that don't necessarily fit together anywhere other than inside our heads. So sorry, we're talk I'm now talking like a hippie. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> but coming back a little bit on hyper, I think hyper is the place in your list of three words. Hyper is the place um, that we have some sense also of linking of threading things together um so you know all, all of those come in wiki um in the sense of an implementation of those things um uh, you know a, a particular manifestation of the idea but the highest um you know most platonic form of the idea is somewhere in that concept of hyper so maybe you know this these hypertext concepts they get I, and this, I think, to your original point, they get increasingly solid as we move down the sequence of words that you've chosen. And so in hyper, we've got the seeds of why linking is important, the idea that we thread things together into multiple spaces. Um, in wiki, we've got a particular type of link, easy, one way, easy to type, but we can compute backlinks. And in tiddlywiki, we've got a very specific implementation of that with more of the ideas that we've enumerated before. So I like the, the notion of that sequence of four words, and I like the idea of this is where we begin to talk about linking. Um, and in our conversation last week, which was um, fascinating to me, I'd come to think, I believe, that linking, I'm just going to put it here now, is basically linking is the act of linking is listing plus sorting. Um, and I'm beginning to back off my sense that sorting and filtering might be their own techniques, but every time you create a link, it's basically a link to at least one tiddler in order. And if you can't have, and this is all related to this notion of hyper, um, I had, where, where he's talking about multiple dimensions, Nelson at one point says non-sequential text, and I'm not sure that you can have such a thing as non-sequential text, there's always a sequence. You can have multiple sequential text, but there's always a sequence. It might be random, which is a sequence. It might be alphabetical, which is a sequence. And mm -hmm. that you've created is a sequence, but you can't go, you can't have a link that's pointing you to not something that's, by definition, a link is sequential, I think. Um, so I, I, I actually disagree with your assertion here, but, but I'd like to take the meta point, which is rather than um, critiquing that is, is pointing out that what we're doing here is there's a sense of world, world building, that we are deliberately assembling the elements of a, of a universe in which we and other people, we can inhabit that universe and reason within the, within the laws of that universe. And I think one of the things that's interesting here is how easy it is to, to make radical seeming changes. You know, so whether uh, whether linking or listing and sorting are the more fundamental operations is, is of immense significance. It's, it's, it determines our basic ordering of these elements of tiddlywiki that we've, that we've drawn up. Um, so I quite like that. Um, and uh, yeah, but I think, it's, I think it's the wrong way around because for me, if you do it this way, then listing and sorting need to come before linking in your list. And that feels fundamentally wrong, that linking in this other list that you've got of the seven or eight um, yeah, yeah. Uh, affordances within Tiddlywiki, um, we, got to, we got to somehow push linking quite close to the top because it's so important. And if I'm teaching somebody Tiddlywiki, 
um, I want linking to be the first thing that you kind of draw their attention to. You know, it's the, it's the beginning of the story. Well I, well, I think so. And I think the words you're talking about, I'm just going to pull them up here. Um, the, 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 te the techniques, they're actually in the techniques. That was the word we used, yes. Yeah, they're in the contents and um, under theory and hypertext techniques. Mm. And I'm not sh filtering, linking, sorting. And then I've got a couple others tagging mm. and transcluding. I'm not sure. They're organized kind of oddly at the moment because I must have been playing. That, with look, that looks alphabetical, but I think we have in the past. Yeah. Um, talked about how we can rank those in, in, in order of fundamentalness. Yes, and here's the, so, but I, I think, but I'm thinking that filtering and sorting are part of linking. Tagging is something different. Tagging is, to me, a very different writing operation than a link. When you create a link, when you write a link, when you create a link, it's intended to move the reader to another node, to another tiddler, to another web page, to another object. And it is. When you, I can explain linking without, with only needing to explain two tiddlers, um, um, you know, the source and the destination, to explain both filtering and sorting. What we've introduced that's new is the idea of there being a set of tiddlers. Yes. Um, and so if we're going, what we would hope with the order that we arrive at for the techniques is, as well as them building on each other sequentially, that the new things that we need to introduce sort of build, if you see what I mean. So right at the top, in fact, of hypertextual techniques, I might be a tiddler, um, but it, I, I guess we're looking at verbs, so maybe it's, it's implicit behind, behind all of these things. Um, and you know, maybe if we're looking at verbs, maybe we need editing in there. Um, yeah, well, I guess what I'm gonna I'll suggest and is that when you create a link in a tiddler, if you're only referencing another tiddler, you know, the simplest thing, you are nevertheless filtering and sorting. You're filtering down to a specific tiddler and you're sorting it. There's only one object in your list. So you're making a list of tiddlers, which has one, and you're sorting it, which has no sort. As soon as you get to two tiddlers, it's still a link, but you then have to say, well, these are the two tiddlers in my list, and now I have to sort them because there's more I, than... I guess to say, I like the fact that it's possible to compose an argument like that um, and in a, you know, in a spirit of holding multiple opposing views at once, like, you know, I quite think it's quite a useful way to think. The trouble is that both filtering and sorter, so all of these things that we're talking about, they have, you know, they're, they're, they're reflected in the implementation of TiddlyWiki. So um, writing a link does not involve, writing and following, navigating a link does not involve filtering and sorting. And so it's, it may be that that's a bit, you know, pulls us a bit far away from what's actually going on under the hood. Not, but I mean, again, I quite like our ability to not need to slavishly worry about what's happening under the hood. <laughs> oh, well, some of us do, but yeah, okay. So we've got hyper there and we will, um, And I'll have to remember to go back and edit these yeah. writing in a live space, but I'm doing what I shouldn't be doing. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and then that takes us to wiki. Um, and wiki is a wiki is a wonderful word. <laughs> um, so obviously when you created tiddly wiki, you drew heavily on the notion of wiki. So what was in your mind when you thought wiki? Okay. So I've been thinking about this too. I think there's, you've got, visible here the most important thing which is ward's original motivation for using the word and it being about quick then mm -hmm. i think what happened afterwards is that we the community around wikis um then started to assign to the word wiki additional meanings that weren't there originally but have become you know our, the list of the essence of wikis and so you've got down there about implying collaboration mm -hmm. i was going to express it perhaps as um how wiki is a is a social construct um uh for instance with roles like and activities like gardening um and okay so maybe i think we're getting close with the one that's at near the bottom of the full perhaps you scroll up one bit more so yes and then there's this ability wiki is a web page that users can modify i think that's contained 
in Ward's use of the word quick, what he meant that was quick, that you know, what was novel that it was quick was the editing. Um, the, the following of links is no quicker than it ever was. Um, for me, um, I think that um, the most fascinating element of wikis is something that um, Ward's community doesn't focus on I don't well, think very I much, think which is much. this idea of making linking be part of the punctuation of writing. Right. Right. Um, and we talked, we talked a bit about this in the past. And this is, my, you know, the sense in which I believe that we will evolve more efficient ways of writing that will closely reflect the way that our minds appear to work yes. in this yes. sort of in that um, And, um, and uh, uh, and, and, and yes, linking is, is this vital first step that by um, turning it from something that you do in a dialogue box labeled footnotes and making it into part of the punctuation, we make it easy. So, the, so for you, the notion that the markup. markup or the commands, the punctuation, which I think of the square brackets and the curly braces and the exclamation points, mm -hmm. I think you... Use X, use X, use X, your title, your title, you need to use that, use that, use that, use that, use that, use that. That's the punctuation, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and of all of the. Bits, for you. Sorry, I had a bit of a sound um, uh, uh, break up there. Um, and of all of those, it's linking that is the most important. You know, the primal, at the tip of wiki text, it's quite complicated at the bottom, but right at the tip is the ability to make And the syntax is. In a technical sense, the syntax of classical wiki text is incredibly optimized for links. You know, by making camel cake, by making it possible to, to create a link by omitting white space. You know, that's the, um, how do you make this thing? You leave something out. So um, the sense in which linking is quick in a wiki is remarkable. You know, it's, it's, it's quicker than normal writing because you're doing less than you would with normal writing. That's that's really interesting. I had not thought of it that way before. But the, so the quickness is not just that it's quick to edit, quick to write, but to, or it's quick to work with, and it's maybe quick to allow you to form ideas. That's interesting. So the notion of weakiness and what happens though now is everybody thinks when they hear weaky, they think it's a web page on which anyone can write. Um, in an odd way, when you get to TiddlyWiki, the thing weird about TiddlyWiki is it actually is a web page on which anyone can write, but you can write on your own version, not on my version. So you've seen in Dropbox, I can write Wiki, but I can't write on your Wiki that's saved in your Dropbox. So in fact, they, they, this, I'm going to restate what you said because it's such a useful point, that um, the classic characteristic of a Wiki anybody can edit at first sight doesn't apply to the wiki, but actually does, um, but that you edit your own, own copy of it. So in fact, what to do wiki is saying in that context um, is something that reflects my conviction based on my experience of working with the web, that shared spaces do not work beyond a very small people work together and trust each other independently of the space. And so shared spaces for me are things like Facebook, Google, Twitter. <laughs> and you know, the, the evidence for them for Twitter not working is, you know, is in the corners, the places where people are driven to miserable suicide by the things that are said to them on Twitter. That's, that's a great societal failure that we're tolerating. Um, and it's, I believe that it stems directly from uh, Twitter being part of the early 21st century wave of companies um, that were predicated on the idea of shared spaces and particularly on the um, uh, extraordinarily attractive economics for them of creating and maintaining a shared space. Shared space. Yeah, so, so the, the, the odd thing about Tiddly Wiki is that it's very difficult to make it collaborative. Um, you, I think some of you may have been in my previous incarnations when we used Tiddly Space which was TiddlyWiki Classic with a space model that allowed for some level of sharing and collaboration, 
to do EV5 doesn't include that at the moment, um, or at least I haven't figured it out. But it's still a wiki to me. And to me, the power of wiki and what's important about wiki is not so much the collaborative aspects, although that's interesting and important, but the all the other, the quickness, the editing, the linking, the, 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 the fact that you're reading the punctuation, and you can, as a writer, scale up something very interactive, very quickly, with minimal code. To me, that's the wiki. That's yeah. what, that's what yeah. wiki is. So, um, And then we come to the important word, right? The tiddly word. The fourth word. So, so tiddly, um, do I even have anything? I have very little. Because... I don't know what it means. I mean, I do, but I want to hear from Jeremy a little bit about what was what is distinctive. Not that what does tiddly mean. We talked about that a little bit in the introductory design, right? Like, where's that word come from? What are the unfortunate aspects of tiddly? We put all that aside as a word, but what is distinctive about tiddly? We talked about what's distinctive about hyper and what's distinctive about wiki. What's distinctive about tiddly that differentiates it from other things that exist in the wiki world or in the hyper world? So does that give you some stuff to riff off of? And I'm going to take some notes about what's unique about tiddly. Um, excellent. Um, just before I go in, when you were talking, I'm hearing, and when I'm talking, I'm hearing quite a noticeable distorted echo just after we speak. Um, I don't know if that's on the recording, but it, can, I mean, it would be possible to transcribe from what I'm hearing, but it wouldn't be possible um, to listen to it and enjoy it. You're getting an echo too? Yeah, I'm getting an echo and a buzzing noise. Hmm. It may be worth it. Steve, why don't you mute uh, you, you and see, if, yeah. see what happens to me if I then speak. And Steve's muted. Is he Steve muted? I can't see. Yes, yeah, Steve's muted and I'm no longer getting the weird background buzz. So maybe a cell phone or feedback or something at your end in your room, I guess. Um, but shall I rattle on for a couple of minutes while you think about the things it could be with James? Um, so the tiddliness, um, done more thinking about this than I have about the other aspects. So I've really enjoyed having to think about um, uh, the um, text, um, hyper and wiki part. And the tiddler part, I can answer in a way, in quite a boring way, because I kind of know now from my perspective what's distinctive about tiddly. But I suspect that my perspective isn't the best perspective. <laughs> I'm more interested in others. But basically, I think TiddlyWiki is about the idea that everything within it is a tiddler. So it takes this idea of a tiddler, of a small unit of content, and that's drawn directly from thinking about the way that our brains work. And then having selected that as a concept that we're going to use to grow from, it then relentlessly applies it to everything. And so within TiddlyWiki at an implementation level, every single entity that TiddlyWiki has to worry about is basically a tiddler. There's a layer of sort of things in JavaScript, but the JavaScript brings up the world of tiddlers. And then, for instance, the user interface of TiddlyWiki can be translated into multiple languages. Each little fragment of text that needs to be translated is stored in a tiddler. And that means that the um, everything that I build or that is built to do stuff with tiddlers can get endlessly reused in all of these different contexts. The second point is that in TiddlyWiki, everything is um, wikification. So this is this mysterious process where we take wiki text, that's ordinary text with the special markup, and we convert it into a web page or a PDF or what have you. So it's sort of executing this, these raw instructions. So um, in the left-hand side of the window here, Steve is typing an asterisk, and that is being wickified such that on the right, it's been turned into a nice, neat um, um, bullet point. Um, and that process is called wickification. And within TiddlyWiki, it's by far the most complex, complex aspect of what it does internally. And so again, because it's like designing an airplane, because it's taking a lot of weight, 
we use it relentlessly for everything. So within TiddlyWiki, things like processing style sheets, which is a standard sort of a thing you need to do on the web, but no ordinary person cares about. That is done by wikifying these style sheets. So that's very, both of these things are very important things that are um, for the sort of, when we look at TiddlyWiki from the inside out, I think, thing that users only become aware of when it's pointed out to them or when they're forced to think about it is an implementation detail um, the uh, but it's the thing that enables then the third thing which is really a consequence of those first two things and it's a consequence that's so audacious and unusual that it needs pointing out itself um, and it is that the wiki text um, that's used in TiddlyWiki is powerful enough, expressive enough, that the entire user interface of TiddlyWiki is written in wiki text. And that's a very important point, that, that TiddlyWiki's user interface itself is written in wiki text. And this is, um, it means that it joins a small set of applications that are like that. There are a few applications whose user interface is written in themselves. Um, but it's a very it's a very unusual characteristic. You know, if you think about um, Excel, there's a programming language that you can program things within Excel, but it's not the same language that Excel is written in. Excel's written in you know, computer programming language. So the consequences of the user interface being written in Wikitext are to me, quite interesting. It means that you, anything that the user sees in terms of interactive facilities within TiddlyWiki, they can repurpose themselves. So the process of using TiddlyWiki is sometimes ends up being the process of creating a custom version of TiddlyWiki with your data in it for some other people to use. So sort of deep customization of TiddlyWiki by adding and removing features. And TiddlyWiki makes all of that available to people who've understood, got a grasp of the basics of Wikitext. And Wikitext can be fairly simple. So that's, that's quite, an, it's the exciting consequence I think Steve touched on. It's the way that TiddlyWiki is generative, that you can build things with it. So there are lots of, when you think of TiddlyWiki as a note-taking application, so for end users who are not interested in hypertext, many people would classify what they do with it as, as note-taking. Um, the, uh, the problem with note-taking is imagine, take lots and lots of notes, lots and lots of notes, and I'm going to end up with a list of notes. And then what? I need to be able to build something out of this material that I've gathered. So I think that's, you know, what I might build out of my list of notes is, you know, maybe that's putting them on the kitchen table and arranging them in columns. And that's exactly the kind of building, building structure that TiddlyWiki lets you do with your, um, with your tiddlers, with your data, um, and extending that to be able to incorporate aspects of any old user interface enables all these um, quite exciting things that we're now seeing, for instance, a tiddly map. Um, you could, Steve, open a new tab and go to tiddlymap.org. Um, and this is, so the tiddlymap.org, I think, is an interesting um, example of what's unique about TiddlyWiki. It's, it's somebody's taken the ability of TiddlyWiki, plugged into it a, an existing mechanism that lets you do mind mapping, thus extending TiddlyWiki into a whole bunch of different use cases. I mean, I'm not proposing we look in great detail at this, but when it loads, you'll see on the right, there's a classic lines and boxes diagram. Um, and um, I've touched on before how I think the human brain, or my brain at least, tends to see things as sort of lumps with um, string joining, links joining them together. And this is, a, a very concrete software implementation of that idea. So it, you can do a bunch of stuff with this. You can view your content like this. You can view your tags like this. And here, this is quite a high-level concept map modeled. And yes, exactly. If you pick them up, you can zoom. You can drag things around. It's highly functional and very intricate. And it's a great example of a characteristic that's unique to TiddlyWiki. So the uniqueness isn't that it does mind mapping, lots of ways of doing mind mapping, 
Um, the uniqueness is that somebody who is not a programmer can take this and build their own stuff that incorporates mind maps. Well, not just mind maps, any kind of, of graph as these things are. Um, so those, those were the important um, first two things, which was um, everything being a tiddler, everything being a wiki, um, how that leads to this concept of it being self-reflective, as you called it here, um, and that in turn gives the user the capability of, of it being generative, the capability of building their own stuff on top of it. Then there's a whole pile of things that are within the implementation of TiddlyWiki that I, I'm not sure that all of these are relevant to our discussion, but they're also, they're kind of, well, I don't know, maybe they are related, but they're things like I touched on before, TiddlyWiki strongly expresses my own personal democratic ideals. It is very easy for anybody on the planet to use TiddlyWiki. All they need is a browser and almost all of the, you know, computers that are designed to be used by humans feature a browser. Um, you don't need special skills, you don't need access to a server. And it brings to that very broad audience a bunch of capabilities that normally would be restricted to people with software development skills. So to me personally, that's a very important characteristic of TiddlyWiki. I'm really against, I am a you know, I'm an, I'm an old codger who does computer software, so I'm a high priest of software. I understand a lot about software, but I hate the fact that there has to be high priests. And all my, as a programmer, um, my strongest motivation is to take these gifts that I have as a developer and to try and pass them on to other people so that they have the same magical capability to make things. Now, all of that, in some sense, stems from the single file aspect of TiddlyWiki um, and the fact that it runs within the browser. You know, browsers are built, well, Chrome, the most popular browser, is built by an advertising company. Chrome's purpose for them is to gather information about you so that they can advertise better to you. And TiddlyWiki subverts that. It takes that tool and lets you use it with your network turned off for this entirely intensely private activity of maintaining your outboard brain. So, so going down that route, I could talk about a few more characteristics of TiddlyWiki that are important, you know, in a, in a cultural societal sense. Um, and then there's a bunch more things that are important in a sort of technical sense. Um, one of those that I'll pick out is the way that it runs both in the browser and under Node.js, which is to say that it's um, in our programmer um, vocabulary, it's isomorphic. Um, that's something that's only recently been possible. But what it means is that TiddlyWiki is, again, in a vanishingly small group of bits of software that runs on multiple completely different platforms. So there's very few, there's lots of apps that run under the browser and Node.js. There's very few apps that run under the browser or Node.js, um, if that makes sense. So um, it's the uh, and that's partly about you know, the available tools at the time. Um, and it's partly, amazingly, it's back to the web again. So the web, the great success of the web has given us um, these amazingly, um, what's the word, um, intensively developed, very polished browsers that we can then reuse as, a, as this slightly anarchic platform where everybody can develop their own applications. So, Steve, don't forget you're muted because of the, the dragon echo. And um, am I still creating echo? Yes, I'm afraid so. Afraid so. Um, if I turn my volume down in the room, we won't hear Jeremy, but I shouldn't be creating echo anymore, right? It's not really an echo. It's, it's a, a buzz. It's a buzz. It's probably this microphone. Um, am I still... Are you still getting my audio? Did I get rid of the... Um, it's the, it the, it the microphone creating a buzz. Yes, now we're much better. So now I can probably unmute Jeremy and we won't have echo. Um, Let's try. Gosh, and, yes, I can um, speak. Yeah, so let me just add a couple things. My browser, although it's supposed to be simple, is 
deathly ill. <laughs> so I've been struggling with that, but I'm going to just um, in our last two minutes here um, suggest, and then I want to give Julia, if she wants to jump in and Kira and James an opportunity to also think to add in what is distinctive and unique about Tidley that's different. And um, I'm going to start by um, referencing a concept called tagly tagging, um, which was truly the, 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 when I first was playing with Tidley Wiki, the tagly tagging concept was what convinced me it worked and that it was useful and, in, and interesting. We don't, um, it's a little harder to come by in Tidley Wiki 5, but I'm working on it. Um, in fact, I've got a tagly macro. Um, I think it's an expression of the same, of the same thing about everything. Write the link. Um, it's an expression of, oh, you can't hear me. Which does something very simple. Um, so for every tiddler that I call it in, and you can drag this into yours, every tiddler that is tagged with the word tagly, it just links all the tiddlers that are linked to it. Okay, so it's just by default, I want to see a list of the tiddlers. That's that list links filter tag title that you see in other places. Um, and at some point, then, then there's some ways that you can sort and mess with those links. That to me was the essence of the key thing of Tiddly Wiki that I discovered. And it was through this notion of Tagly. And then the sentence that really um, helped me understand it was this, um, and I can't remember who wrote it, but, and I might have it wrong, but a tiddler is a tag is a tiddler. Mm. Oh, I'm sure I am. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to so, do it. It's fine. Um, but the notion that a tiddler... Yeah. Um, I, yeah I, it's, it's another expression of this idea that everything... I'm not getting any sound? It's another expression. You getting me, getting me now? Uh, we're not getting any sound? No, you're not picking up Jeremy Oh, I'm not oh. picking up Jeremy in the room, right? I need my volume up. Sorry, he's yeah. talking. That's what we needed. There, there you go. Okay, brilliant. I was just going to say that... What you this um, tiddler is a tag is a tiddler is if you like it's the entry level insights for everything is a tiddler. It's the first time you encounter that because at first you meet tiddlers and then you meet tags and you don't realize they're different. Then you get ah oh, a tag is a tiddler. Uh, sorry, a tiddler is a tag is a tiddler, and then you realize actually it's not just tags that are tiddlers. Everything is a tiddler. Right. So so uh, so I would just set it in a um in a way that resonated. I mean you're. Everything is a tiddler you get to soon, but if you start with realizing that there's no difference between a tag and a tiddler, like at an operational level, you can use them interchange. Not you'll you'll come to it, but that to me was really distinctive about Tiddly Wiki. Everything else that uses tags, tags are over there. You you mess with your tags over there. You don't. They're not integrated into your into your thing into your text. Um, so you can use them, you can create them, but you can't work with them. You can't, you know, manipulate them in the same way. So that's what, to me, that was really the distinctive parts of Tiddly Wiki. Um, and so um, let, let's wrap up our conversation there. Jeremy, that was, that was good. I think that we, we did better this time than last time. Um, so a little organization, I'll work on that. Um, and hopefully we recorded this time. Um, let me, James, Kira, Julia, Julia, you're doing stuff with really interesting stuff that we're going to critique in the next hour. So if, if you're around, we'll, we'll look at that. Um, you guys have ideas and comments? So we've about 10 minutes for comments and thoughts. And you have to shout or come sit next to me. Gather around my little laptop, folks, because here's the microphone. Or Julia, you've got your own. Any ideas that you want to add into the conversation? All set? Okay, so let's, um, I'm going to save my tiddler. Um, Jeremy, thanks to, to hang out to the workshop. That's what we're going to be playing with spreadsheets and Flickr. We're going to be flicking photos of puppies into tiddly wikis momentarily with a suggestion that you gave us last week of writing with wiki words. So we're going to turn that into an exercise. And um, that's actually for one of Julia's projects. And I think Kira wants to do that too. She just doesn't know it yet. Excellent. Yeah. And, um, and then we're going to play with copying spreadsheets, using spreadsheets as a way to generate names of tiddlers from charts and copying spreadsheets into tiddly wiki, which is just not working very well at all. But 
we'll muddle okay. through. Well, um, in the spirit of open source, um, there's very small amount of development that's necessary to get um, the uh, spreadsheet import that I, I know. want. So you, you probably need to badger me a bit harder to... Okay. Um, it's actually, it's that. a copy paste and it's a little piece of HTML code, but I'll badger, I'll, I'll put it back in the group. I've, I've written into the Tiddly Web group a few times and I haven't gotten any takers yet. So I'll, I'll, I'll ring it up again. Cool. Oh, Julie, was... oh I'm sorry. I, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when you were talking about, about, about text and the open source thing, I listened to a really good TED Talk about how the um, original printing press was the first version of open source information and the fact that now multiple people can read one's scientific information or writing so that was pretty cool yeah that the, you know and the um a lot of the stuff that we're talking about even hypertext um some have documented and gone back and done lots of interesting research to show that you don't really need digital technology to have hypertext it just makes it a lot easier so although i think nelson disagrees and he says you know there's just no way you can really do this without a computer. And I guess I agree with him there too. So, um, Jeremy, you were gonna jump in and say something there? Um, no, I, I, if we're drawing to a close, I was, um, I, I, I was in an orderly manner ready to say my goodbyes. Okay, yeah, good. Busy. And um, yeah, so we will see, we're gonna take a break here um, and we'll pick up again at 11. And we have new students and new, new people coming in for the workshop at 11. So we'll, we'll record that as well. Great. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks very much, Steve. Thanks much enjoyed it. I look yep. forward to seeing you next week. Cheers, okay. everybody. Bye. And I'm going to end the meeting.